Hey guys, Tanya here with Tinkering in Ink with Tanya, and today I am doing a video for Spellbinder's block print stamp set. And we're going to actually start out using the glimmering or a glimmer foil kit called Perfect Fit Hexagon Strips. I got this, oh gosh, almost a year ago in one of their kits, Glimmer of the Month kits, and you can still get it. It's pretty awesome. It's got several plates that actually nest together so you can tape them together like I have today and make a background in, or stripes in a variety of ways. I'm using the rainbow uh, glimmer foil and this is my quick tip for cutting your foil. Just take a little snip out of it and use a, I think it only works with a or it works best with a metal ruler and I put mine with the metal side down there's a little bit of foam on the back and of course I'm using the hinge method to put the foil underneath the paper or excuse me the foil underneath the plates on the paper so I can position that exactly the way I want it. I've already heated up my panel and I put it through the platinum and if you have any overfoiling, which can happen if you've overheated your plates or just because it sometimes does, I use an eraser to gently rub that off. And I repeated that pattern several times to finish an entire panel of <clears throat> cardstock for that. And I'm going to take one of the images from block prints. This one happens to be a mushroom in a hexagon. And I'm going to use a... Um, a multicolor ink pad from Hero Arts. <clears throat> this came in one of the uh, my monthly Hero kits. And on this particular image, I am sticking with the yellow and green and purple towards the one end of the ink pad. And this is an uh, is a reactive ink uh, die pad. <clears throat> I'm not sure what colors those are. Be, uh, if you can purchase those as ink pads or not. But I did stamp it twice because I wanted to make sure I had a good juicy image to uh, clear a heat emboss that with. And that'll just make this a really extra special image to put on the front of our card. It's going to have to really shine if it's going to be used with that glimmer foiled background. Now I don't have a hexagon die that coordinates with this. I'm not sure if there is one that specifically coordinates with this hexagon die, or excuse me, hexagon image, but um, I don't have any in my stash, but I'll look and see if there are any available on Spellbinders. But this is a really simple image to cut out. <clears throat> I might have been done, I might have done better if I used my long bladed scissor, but this went, worked pretty good. Now, I am going to uh, resort to my favorite embossing technique, which is stamping an image repeatedly over a background and then heat embossing it with white satin pearl embossing ink. <clears throat> and this particular image does an excellent job of nesting and creating um, a full background. Look at that, beautiful. Now I'm gonna use some coaster blanks to adhere those to the back of the panel. It's gonna make that glimmered background have a little more stability. And of course, I like the dimension. And I'll glue that to a five by seven card base. We're also going to add coaster blank to the back of the rest of the elements here. So we can glue those onto the front of the card all together. I just take some scraps of the coaster blanks and glue those to the back of the images. And I put them under a heavy item like my Misty or a heavy uh, acrylic block. You don't have to have them exactly covered. Um, here we go with the entire foiled panel. Look at that. Isn't that glorious? You could absolutely use this to uh, be just your card. Absolutely. However, we're going to cover most of it up with this next panel. And I think that it actually brings more balance to the card, <clears throat> even though we're covering up so much of that foiling. And then I'm going to add a little glue to the back of the mushroom hexagon. It kind of has a psychedelic feel to it, doesn't it? <laughs> My daughter actually adores mushrooms, so this is going to be her birthday card. 
and not because of the psychedelic factor. At least I don't think so. Mm, let's not go there. <laughs> um, and then I am using an older um, glimmer foil plate. This one's from July of 2019. It's called Glimmering Sentiments. It, it does the sentiment in glimmer foil, and then it has the outline die, which I, I love that. That is one of my favorite things to be able to die cut the sentiments out uh, in a block like this. That is, it's just perfect. Again, I had a little overfoiling, just quick, lightly going over that with the eraser. And you can use a white eraser too, because those tend to not get uh, smudgy. I do use a scrap piece of paper to rub off any color on the eraser when I see that there is some. So I'm, I also die cut some coaster blank with that same die and I'm going to layer that up. And since there is, um, I do want this to be a little higher than the mushroom image, the main mushroom image, I do put two layers of coaster blank behind that. You can do layers of cardstock if that's what you've got handy. Foam um, sheets work also. I just really like that this is all recyclable. I don't know about the foiling and the embossing. I don't know if that makes it not in, <clears throat> recyclable, but there we go. And I pulled a bunch of gems from my stash, a mixture of very like a lilac-y purple and some very pale green. And I think I've got some clear gems there too, some iridescent clear gems. And I added those with some glue and my little uh, Marvy jewel picker. <clears throat> now we're going to move on to the next card. I am using... I believe this is mustard seed, wild honey, and fossilized amber. And I'll create a pattern with those um, across the front of this panel. This is going to be a more summery card. Um, I'm going with the sunflowers feel. I guess that's not summer, but it's certainly bright. I do love the brightness of this card. <clears throat> and these three yellows go together very nicely. This is a piece of Fun Stamper's Journey cardstock, and I don't know what color it is. Um, it came in one of my Spellbinders kits, and I do have quite a stash of those. Um, I will try to find that and link it for you if you want that particular vibrant yellow. And it does take this Distress Oxide ink very well and still creates a beautifully crisp image with this cleaning up the ink from my pad there. <clears throat> and I'm gonna spatter some gold on here. Uh, I couldn't tell you exactly what gold that is. It could be some perfect pearls in gold. It could be some gold glimmer ink from Hero Arts. It just depends on what I had <clears throat> in my little paint palette there. And I did use this glimmer foil, these uh, hexagon strips again. I used them on some black cardstock with some, oh, I think it's uh, just the gold, either that or whatever brass they have. It's one of those glimmer foils. And I will link that again below. I am also heat embossing this same nice yellow sunflower in um, brass embossing powder from Hero Arts. And I'm going to use the hem stitch circles die to die cut that circle. And I did use the edge die that I had used to cut out the hexagon strip, hexagon strip that kind of looks like a sunflower also um, to cut the top edge of that stamped and spattered panel. And that strip is in the perfect fit hexagon strips. So it completely coordinates with those strips. Gonna put some coaster blanks on the back again to add stability and a little dimension to that card. <clears throat> and I did have, I save all my little scraps of the uh, coaster blanks. They come in handy for times just like this. I'm gonna make that raised up a little bit. And because I did that, I have overhang. I'll just trim off the edges on the back of the panel. It's a good reason to wait to put this particular panel on the front of the card base until you have that element added. Now you want to add this before you add too much of the upper elements because 
it won't lay nice and flat otherwise. Again, five by seven white card base for this. Using some 110 weight cardstock. And I'll put that with a couple pieces of coaster blank under there just to make that all nice and evenly pressured underneath the misty there. My nice heavy weight to make sure everything lays nice and flat and adheres well. And then I am adding a couple extra little pieces behind that because it needs to straddle that black and gold strip. <clears throat> I embossed that sunflower image a couple of more times and used a smaller circle from the hemstitch uh, circles die set. And I am gluing that on here. I had actually used a wood grain embossing folder for the white panel above the yellow. <clears throat> And I used the same birthday sentiment. Yes, I need birthday cards. That's why I'm using the birthday sentiments. There doesn't happen to be a birthday sentiment in the block prints stamp set. Uh, and what this is what I use my cards most for right now because I make them for coworkers at work. And there are 11 November birthdays. So yeah, somebody in November is going to get this very bright, sunny card. I'm adding some yellow and gold and black rhinestones to the front of this card to finish it off. Just using my Marvy jewel picker and my Barely Arts precision glue again here to tack those down. And that is about it for this card. <clears throat> I hope you enjoyed this. Let me know what you think. And there are so many ways you could use these stamps. I know that there are several of these items still available. The sentiment glimmer foil kit is not available any longer, but the stamps and the hexagon strips are still available. And they are so versatile. You can use them in so many ways. I hope you give them a try. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, please take a moment to do that. And if you're interested in any of the products I used in, these video, in this video, check out the description box below for a clickable link list. Till next time, bye-bye.